we sort of done things uh, opposite from normal, how the invitation lies. But I'll take something here on our, since this is our church anniversary, and uh, tell you about some things this morning. And let's look here in Acts chapter 24. This will be very short. So look at um, Acts 24 and verse 14. Paul said, This I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, see, to the Catholic Church, we're heretics. They believe we're heretics. We believe they are. See, uh, they call heresy. The heresy is some that believe in false doctrine. So worship I the God of my fathers. Look what he said. Believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. 24 years ago this morning, I stood and said, we believe everything written in the law and in the prophets, in the Bible. Today, I have an announcement to make. We still believe. <laughs> I'd you worried there, didn't I? Uh, everything that's written. I have not changed my mind one bit about what this book says. I've never found nothing no better. I've never found nothing that works better. I've never found the answer to life's problems in any other book other than this book right here. I'm telling you, people. You say, boy, you're a hard-headed person. Well, I, world's changed. We ain't talking about 24. We're talking about 50. I believe the same book that I believed when I was 19. Same one. Same one. I believe the same book. Some, when I got saved, somebody gave me a living Bible. And that was when the hippie movement was going on. And there was a lot of them people really did get saved. And a lot of preachers like, like Greg Laurie, people like that, come out of that hippie movement. And a lot of them really did get saved. They never was taught right. A lot of them believed you could, you know, still smoke weed and sit on the beach and play guitar and worship Jesus. But they didn't make it. They didn't make it. Them people went out back into Asbury, Asbury and Haight Street in San Francisco. But some of them got in church and stayed in there. And I got involved in a local church. And what you do when you get saved, you get in a church and get involved in it and stay in it. If you get your feelings hurt, you stay in it anyway. If the preacher hurts you or gets mad, you stay in it anyway. Don't be a big crybaby. I mean, if I, we're not going to all get in here together and everything go everybody's way all the time. You're going to get hurt. We're going to. I get hurt. We're, live. Quit crying. Uh, God, it's it's that way in life anywhere. It's that way on any kind of job. It's that way on any kind in home anywhere. So I'm glad I got hooked up with a local Bible believing church and stayed with it. Now the reason that we believe the King James Bible is still the Word of God after all these years is not because we're just hard-headed mountain people and stubborn and ain't been out and seen what the rest of the world has thought. That's what they think. That's what they say. Oh, you people, it, you just grew up in them mountains up there in North Carolina, and you you just heard that all your life. If you would have grew up in, in Iraq, uh, you, you, you would believe the same thing they believe. No, that's not right. That's not. We don't believe it. We don't believe the Bible because... We just happen to grow up here. There's people, there's Muslims being saved. A lot of Muslims are getting saved. And they're starting to believe the Bible. And people from other nations start to believe the Bible. Now, when it comes to the Bible, yeah, that's our foundation. We don't have no right to exist if the Bible's not true. Is and and I every preacher in the world's got to deal with this. And most of them just sort of skim over it, hoping the congregation won't pin them down and ask them. But if you ask. 90% of the preachers in North Carolina, is there a book in this world that you can get your hands on that has the very words of God in it? If they were honest, they'd say no. I'm talking about Baptist preachers. Because they believe that the Bible that we have is just a translation of what they call the original Greek. And because of that, it has flaws and errors in it. Now, take just a second here. I'm using old signs here. Uh, this is this is not an anniversary message. It's, I just want to show you something. Our Bible, this Bible that you have in your lap today, 
was taken from a Greek, New Testament Greek manuscript called text. See that text? Like you text on your phone? Receptus. In, they talk backwards in Greek. They received text. Received text. That was Koine Greek. Koine means the language of the common people. And remember, the Bible said that the common people heard him gladly. The Lord's always been around common people. When he was here, he wasn't hanging out with the big shots at the, at the country club. He was down with the apostles and the disciples down there. Right now, now, so our Bible in 1604 was translated from that Greek text right there. They, they, there, was, uh, there was like 54 scholars took seven years and one of them take this portion, one of them take that portion because no one man could have done that. And God, the Holy Ghost, led these men and when they put it together, King James of England authorized it. King James didn't write the Bible. He didn't touch it. He said, oh, King James changed it in there because he got divorced. Or King James was, was, was a homosexual or something. I don't know if any of that's true. But if it is, it don't mean squat. It mean nothing. He, didn't, he was simply the monarch on the throne that gave the a commandment to get, have the Bible translated. Now, in 1880, they were scrambling around over there. And they found two other Greek manuscripts. And they decided that these manuscripts were older than this one. This was called this. One's called Vaticanus. That, what does that look like? Vatican. See, found it, Catholic Church. What is the other, that other word? Sinaiticus. These manuscripts were discovered, and all new versions of the Bible come from these set of manuscripts. So, you listen? You listen? When somebody says, well, the reason I got an NIV or the reason I got an ESV or the reason I got an is it just makes it easier to understand. And I'm, No, 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 no. It's not an update of the King James. It's taken from a completely different set of manuscripts. Now, give you a couple examples. Give you a couple examples. Take your Bible, turn to Acts chapter 8. This is very elementary to some of y'all, but to about two-thirds of you, uh, maybe you don't even know this at all. I'm going to take just a minute and show you why still, after all these years, I still believe, preach, and stand on the same book we sat on when we first got started. And I ain't planning on doing nothing else. Amen. Acts chapter number 8, and you'll look here. This is a story of, of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, and he's, he's going to uh, win this guy to the Lord here. And he begins to win this guy to the Lord. He said, uh, uh, look here. Look at verse number 35, Acts 8, 35. Are you looking at it? Don't go out here and say, oh, Danny, just believe that because he's a narrow-minded hillbilly. Uh, I, look, look at your Bible. I'm going to show you. If you look at your Bible, then you, you, you can't blame me for this. Verse 35, Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture. He didn't have the originals neither. Philip didn't have the originals, but he called it scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, this is the guy he's witnessing to, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? He says, here's some water. You're talking about getting saved and getting baptized? What I got to do? And verse 37, Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Hold your finger right there on verse 37. That come from this. Verse 37, come from this. Listen to me. The New International Version, the East, uh, the NIV, the RSV, the New ASV, the New RSV, all the other new Bibles do not have verse 37 in them. Because this manuscript don't. And when they come to that, they said, Huh, not in there. Must not supposed to be in there. So they left it out. So what you've got is, look at it, look at it again. What you've got is, the guy said, what, do you, what keeps me from being baptized? Verse 36 and verse 38, he commanded the chariot to stand still and he went down and baptized him. He, did, he got saved, verse 37. He don't get saved in that Bible. 
He's just going down the road and said, what keeps me from getting baptized? Nothing. Come on. Baptize him. In your Bible, it said, I, he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's salvation. How many times you met people said, well, those new Bibles, they don't really change any doctrine. It just takes out the these and thou. That's not a doctrine. Man getting saved ain't a doctrine. That ain't just a doctrine, brother. That's the main doctrine. Gone. Gone. Not in it. So we're not just crazy people that don't, that just heard somebody say this. We believe. We, do it, we know why we believe what we believe. There are three kinds of people in churches. One, people have no idea what they believe. And then there's others that know what they believe, but they don't know why they believe it. And then there's others that know what they believe and why they believe it. I hope we can all eventually get to that third category. We know what we believe and we know why we believe it. When somebody says, well, Brother Danny, so-and-so is a famous TV preacher and he uses it. And I, well, all you can say is, so what? Uh, somebody said, well, well, Brother Danny, you can take the living Bible and find the plan of salvation in there. And that's absolutely true. So, so you, you, can find, you can find a diamond in a trash can. That, that don't make it a jewelry store. Just just because you can plan, find the plan of salvation does not make that, that all, all the rest of it right. Show you another one. We'll go get something neat here in a minute. Luke chapter 2. Look at Luke chapter 2. There's a bunch of these, and I won't take time to show them. Luke chapter 2. This is a verse when Jesus was away from his parents there, and they couldn't find him. And uh, they was all looking for him, couldn't find him. And uh, uh, they finally found him there. And look at verse number... Oh, good night. It's before that actually happened. It said, uh, look at verse 32. Luke 2, 32. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Look at verse 33. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. No problem with that, right? Joseph and his mother. Every one of these new Bibles say, his father and his mother. Stuff like that right there show you how sharp that King James Bible is. It's like a razor. These say his father and mother. This one says Joseph and his mother. Somebody tell me why it said Joseph and his mother. Because Joseph wasn't his father. Who was his father? God. Joseph never touched Mary until after they were married. You got that? So, that's an attack on the virgin birth, people. Joseph was not his father. Oh, well, it says about the virgin. Yeah, maybe it does. But I don't want a Bible. I don't want a Bible that says Joseph was Jesus' father. He wasn't. He wasn't. You see, it's manuscript. It come, It ain't just like, it ain't just like, Oh, you crazy people, you hillbillies, you've heard that all your life, and you've heard them count meat and preach. This old count meat and preach know what that's talking about. They try, uh, like I told old grandma one time, they said, uh, uh, Well, we've tried uh, some of them promises in the Bible. And she said, I've tried a few of them promises myself, and I found out they're all true. We do well to listen to what grandma said sometimes. Now, one more, one more. Uh, let's go back to Daniel chapter 3, back in the Old Testament. And this is a story of. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire there. And he, and he looks in here, and you know the story. The king throws them in the fire, and you know the story, how it goes there. Uh, king looks, he sees four of them in there, and he looks around. Look at that. Let's read this story here. Uh, I know this is not a Sunday morning, but this is a Wednesday night Bible class. But it's just what's on my heart to tell you. Since it's our anniversary, uh, we say why we believe what we believe, and ain't got no plan to change it. Uh, Daniel chapter number 3. And look at verse number, let's see here. Where are we at? Um, verse 25. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men. See, so he threw three in there. But when he looked in, he saw four. And the weird thing is walking around in it. There's two miracles already. He threw three men in. And look, and there's, there's one, two. Hey, there's four in there, King. I said, well, that ain't nothing. They're walking around in it. I saw one of them doing like this, looking for him a coat. No, that ain't in there. But they was comfortable in there, brother. There's air conditioning in that place. Look at the rest of the verse. 
And they have no hurt. There's another miracle. And the form of the fourth is like the capital S, son of capital G, God. The king looked in and say, the, that fourth one looks like the son of God. Guess what? When the new Bibles come out, that's not in any of them. Check the NIV. Check the RSV. Check the new ASV. Check it on. It says that fourth one is like a son of the gods. Little G. So all these old preachers that preached for a thousand years, that was Jesus walking in the fire with Shadrach. That's wrong. The new Bibles come out and say it was just like a son of the gods. Zeus, who knows who. You see what I'm saying? Stuff like that over and over and over and over. And I'll tell you, look, if you didn't even know that, if you didn't know any Greek, if you didn't know any Hebrew, if you didn't know any church history or history of the King James Bible, which I have studied, by the way, I know, y'all, y'all, I talk like a hick on purpose. I could fix my language if I want to, but I won't on purpose. Because I don't want people to think that education makes you spiritual. It don't. Amen? So I talk just like I've always talked my whole life. But I have done my homework on the history of the King James Bible. And we don't just believe it because we're, we're, we're hillbillies. No, no, no better. We know exactly why we live. And let me tell you, if you don't even, if you say, well, Brother Danny, I can't study all that stuff. You can. But if you refuse to, all you got to do is what Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruits. That's all you got to do. If you see a tree and it's got apples on it, you don't have to go take a course on in college on what I have an apple tree. That's the easy way to do it. Now the scientists will say, you have no right to say that. You're not educated on growing apples. Oh, okay. There's an apple tree. Okay. Uh, they they get mad at a saying stuff like that. Look, you shall know a tree by the fruit that it bears. There have been more people saved. There have been more revivals started. There have been more heathen converted. There have been more works done. Churches started. Ministries built over the teaching and preaching of a King James Bible than any other book that's ever been on planet earth, including the original manuscripts. Including them. That's sir, something special about that book right there, y'all. That's not just an ordinary book. That thing will read your mind. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. I've been reading it all these years. I've read my New I'm on my New Testament. I'm in just starting in uh, in uh, First Corinthians, I think, and for my 108th time. In my new church, and it just continually just jumps out at me and jumps. I think, oh my goodness, oh my! I see stuff in there every time. It's like a light under my feet, a lamp to my feet, and a light to my path. It gives you hope and comfort. That's the book that people go to uh, when you're carrying your loved ones out there in the graveyard and say, by the cause of the promise of that book, I'll see mama again. I'll see grandma again. That's the book that people have in the hospital and walk around saying, Lord, that young, the young man over there who drowned, I guarantee you, he said, call on Jesus. That's the book that brought that little boy through. Thank God, brother, we can still believe this book. Salmon world on fire. It, it manifests itself. In fruit, fruit, brother, fruit. You know what the fruit of the new Bibles are? A bunch of confusion. Because you don't believe it's the Word of God, why well, spend hours and hours memorizing it and teaching it? And that's why, quote, worship has degenerated into a nightclub. There's no authority. No book to preach. And a preacher who don't have the Bible cannot preach with authority. I'm a little guy and I ain't much. But I, I, I stand behind a big God and a great book. You know, people used to come hear me preach and they'd say, you're Danny Castle. That's for the internet. I said, yeah. Well, you got a problem with that? I said, no, but really I pictured you to be like seven foot tall and breathing fire and but." I said, no, I get like that when I'm preaching. <laughs> I really, uh, but I tell you, you start preaching that book, boy, he's, God starts honoring it. He starts honoring that book. It's not the man. It's just the vehicle. We're going to camp tomorrow. Go and give us a song, girls. Now, this is the very strangest message I've ever preached for anniversary, but I just want to nail it down that we still believe what we did when it started. 
Just in case anybody has any questions, I don't think you do. But sometime we'll go in depth to this and do a whole bunch more than verses like I showed you. But what I showed you is enough to keep you. Without. Maybe you're here this morning, God's speaking to your heart. I don't know. Maybe you're here and you don't even know if you're going to heaven or hell. You better make up your mind and get it fixed. I think we ought to sing this morning, whatever they want to sing, I don't care. And take just a second and say, you know what, people? God saved us. He put us on the right track. I don't know why. Just pure mercy, I reckon. Pure mercy. You know how I believe I found the truth? I wanted it. If you're hungry for the truth, God will get it to you. That's the secret. That's just not your, it's not your IQ. It's not your talent. It's not your education. It's hunger. He that hungereth and thirsts after righteousness, the same shall be filled. That's right. It's hunger. The Bible's the only book in the world that your heart attitude determines what you get out of it. Other books ain't like that. It's just head. I see people when I fly on an airplane and I see people reading all kinds of books. I thought, what in the world? What a waste of time. There's a woman reading a book that thick on some rope. Ah, I'd rather dig a ditch all day than read up one of them romance novels that thick. Good night. Shoot me. I, mean, I want something with some life in it, brother. You know the world's crazy, right? Uh, he's talking about Todd talking about his family. You know, Dax is here with us this morning. He did real good up there and wherever they was at like last night. Fin finished eighth and out, out of a thousand. And uh, you know what? The world's crazy. Everybody's talking about the price of gas. You know what's higher than gas? Water. Water's $24 a gallon in the airport. And I, I was, they won't let you carry none in there. They're ridiculous. They got you trapped in there. They got you trapped once you get past security. And I said, man, I got to have some water. I'm going to take some out. Took me a snack to eat on the plane. $4 for a bottle of water. $4. And while she, I was figuring it up in my head, a gallon, that's $24 a gallon. Water, people. I remember when we, I remember when they first started selling, I said, they can't sell water. Water's free. <laughs> remember that growing up? And we still drink our water in Hoppy Tom. It's the same thing they sell in the store. I'd gladly sell it to you for $24 a gallon. Bring you a five-gallon bucket to my house. I'll give you a discount. Uh, $75. A bucket, five gallons. That's a, the crazy. And listen, if you're not careful, you'll get sucked into the narrative all this political stuff. God, y'all. We's fixing to see a mess here in the next few months. There ain't no telling what's going to happen. But I'm glad, thank God. Y'all sing. I'm glad, thank God, we can still stand on the old book. Thank God we still got a Bible. Thank God. Amen. 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 Let's all stand this morning. Amen. 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 Just maybe you need to get your life right. Maybe you need to get your heart right this morning. Glory to God. Maybe you ought to just sing it with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Where I caught a glimpse of Him. The Savior reaching out to me. With hands that pour my skin. $24 Oh, no greater yeah. love water. Yeah, I saved but four dollars. That's cheap. What's the other thing you caught for water? Five hundred dollars. <laughs> Everybody, let's sing. I, I'll take Jesus. I'll take him this morning. I'll take Jesus. I'll take him every time. Yeah, get him up there. Everybody. No question in my mind. No question in my mind. Hey. I'll take Jesus every time. Every time. Yes. Hey, man. Take him every time. Maybe you're here this morning and say, you know what, preacher? The devil's trying to knock me out. The 
devil trying to get me off the track. Get it right. Settle it. Settle it this morning. Change your mind on some things. Change your mind on some things. Tempting me to turn around, denying Jesus' name. Yeah, ma'am. Well, I'd rather be a poor man Hallelujah. than the riches in the truth. Yeah, ma'am. So without a second thought, Lord of God, let me tell you tell what, what I'm gonna do. I do. Everybody together. I'll take Jesus. That's right. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. Every time. Every time. Amen. He means more to me Glory. than the world Glory. you see. There's no There's question in my no mind. question in my mind. Hallelujah. I'll take Jesus every time. Amen. All right, you do that now, and God will bless you for it. Now, uh, don't forget now, uh, tonight, meeting with everybody going to camp, everybody. But we are having regular church, so don't miss that. And then, of course, be here tomorrow morning, packed up and ready to go. Be here by 8.30, quarter to 9. Be, uh, the guys will help you get your stuff packed on the bus. You can't sit with your luggage. That's not allowed. We don't have room. So all the luggage got to go in the back and underneath the belly of the bus. And everybody pile in the seats. It's going to be very, very crowded. You may not see your luggage till you get home forever. Uh, uh, now, we will be stopping at McDonald's in, over in, at the Irwin exit over in Tennessee to eat lunch around 11.30ish. So bring money to eat twice. Twice. Once on the way there and once on the way back. All the meals are included at camp. Okay? Amen. We're excited about it. Looking for a great time, the Lord. Next year, we'll, we'll do something big for anniversary. I'm, we just let it go this year, actually. Next year will be a big one. Uh, maybe you pray we'll get that building built. We'll have a place to have us a big dinner. All right. Amen. Heart's clear. Glad to save. Holler, amen. amen. I'm going to ask our brother uh, from Florida, if he will, dismiss his brother and everybody fellowship before you go.